guys how you doing <clears throat> hope you're doing well hope everything is uh, uh, going well for you thank you um, for clicking on this video and please subscribe let's get the numbers up I tried to post more videos now um, so please thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching but listen man I got something I want everyone to, to think about you know I got something I would like all of you guys to think about especially African Americans and it could be Eidos or Pan-Africanists right I think I think in my personal view we should we should be firing at both fronts but it, Trump just did an interview okay and in that interview he says the Jews were controlling the Senate for years in America. They were controlling the Senate. Okay? They were controlling the Senate. Okay? Until the squad um, came around. And the squad is basically the AOC and, and the other Iman or Imam, whatever her name is. But for me, that's not my in the interest is not about the squad. My interest is about him saying the Jews were controlling the Senate. Because I made a video. If you go on my YouTube, you'll find it. Where I suggested that if, if African Americans want to get things done, they should first of all become, create wealthy. You know, matching and all this other stuff just doesn't work. You know, as lo minority, I'm going to repeat again, minority, when, you, when you're in a country and you're part of the so-called minority, it just means you're not important. And this is, this, you have to understand how the world works, guys. You have to understand how the world works or else you keep going through the same thing over and over and over again, you know, and you're not going anywhere. Once you understand how the world works, then you set up a plan on how you're going to achieve your goals. If you're going to have to go always be begging, just look around you guys. Just look around you. I want every African-American, I want you to hear this. Look around you. You know, you should get reparations. I support that 100%. You know, I'm an African. And for the labor of three, four hundred years of free labor, you should get at least even just free good education to bring you up to standard with everyone else. Is that there? No. Your government is going to tell you they don't have money. And yet, they spent trillions of dollars in, um, in Afghanistan. And they're spending a billion dollars more helping out the Afghan uh, refugees who created the mason there. It was the same country. But when you guys go to ask for this, they tell you there's no money. Again, minority means unimportant. You are not important. That's what it means. You see, the Asians... They had a few things. What did the government do? The government did something, put a few million dollars to help fight the hate against the Asians. Has that ever been done when it comes to black people? No. You know why it happened to Asians, even though they're in the minority? Money. Because they got money. Asians are creating jobs. They run all the beauty stores around your areas and you guys go and buy from them. What you give them, you give them power. Money, just like in Scarface, where they said money gives you power. It's the truth. You know, people can say whatever they want to say. That is just the truth. Money gives you power. Okay? So we can be fighting and bickering over each other, the reality is we should be working together, you know. And in the video, the Jews in America are also a minority, but they ain't matching, man. They ain't matching. They have said, since their um, experience with the Nazi, they've said, we're going to run, we're going to control everything. That's what they said. This will never, never happen again. But what we are going to do, we are going to control everything. And how do they do that? Money. Money, guys, talks. All this freedom, that freedom that means nothing. At the end of the day, money wins. Cash is king. Maybe in the future we'll be saying crypto is king. <laughs> you know, 
But here's the thing, guys. Money gives you power. Okay? You should get your reparations. That's true. Even just free education. Good quality free education for you. That's That would be, to begin with, that would be great. But you're not getting that. You know why? Because you have no money. And you are an, an important. So if you are a minority, which means unimportant, for you to become important, you got to have money. You guys are not, don't have money. As a community, don't tell me, oh, we got Jay-Z, we got Kanye, and we got uh, these other people. LeBron James and, 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 and Junior. There's a guy who's even richer than, than, than LeBron James. You see? Because you got, you got that. You got to have money. So, how do you become important? Obviously, you create wealth. Then the next question is, how do you create wealth? This is where Pan-Africanism comes in. Pan-Africanism does not necessarily mean you guys have to leave America and move to Africa. That's not Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism is to connect black people all over the world economically. You belong to the richest continent on the planet. Something up there has been done to us, both on the continent and in, and in the diaspora, where we don't value ourselves. We devalue ourselves. We've been meant to believe that begging is the way to go. Because I'm going to give you something, all right? And I want you to give me an answer. Give me a country in this world that's not white, that's Christian and developed. Give me one country. All, all I'm going to ask for, one country. That's not white, but it's Christian and it's developed. One country. You're not going to give me one. I hope you do. But as far as I've, I've looked around, I haven't found one. China, it's not Christian. Japan, it's not Christian. India, that's not Christian. The, the difference between these people and us, the, the, those guys have managed to hold on to their culture. Whereas in Africa and also in the diaspora among black people, we've destroyed our culture and then we tried to assimilate into another racist culture. That's why in America, they'll consider you as part of the society. You know, that's why you don't get most of these values because you are trying to assimilate into that culture. And because they, you, you, you are trying to assimilate in there and you are small, then you don't have a voice. You don't... You don't control the narrative. They do. Just look at it this way. You know, because you're part... If you look at, if you look at just ambassadors, uh, American ambassadors in Africa, I think we should have at least 90% or 80% of them black. That's not the case. It's still a lot of white people. Because you guys, in the end, they just say, oh, because we are Americans. You know, you don't control the narrative. So the way you do this, this stop matching. Stop marching. So it doesn't it doesn't do anything. I just heard uh, George Floyd in Minneapolis. They've just declined. Uh, well, the Senate just declined some of the laws that were there to change something uh, in relation to George Floyd, and they've declined that. You know, because you are an important. The way you do this, you have to remember, Marcus Gavi was the number one crowdfunder before even there was crowdfunding. You guys. There's, you have $2.6 trillion spending power. That tells me you got money, right? But you don't realize the power that you have in your hands. You, know, you don't have real money where you can influence things, but you have a basis from which you can grow real wealth. Because you know, our friends, after their experience with the Nazis, they started to control everything. We're going to control the narrative by controlling the media. And we're going to control most governments by using money. You know, for you to own the media, you need money. This is what I'm telling you guys. Wealth creation gives you power. So what you should be doing now, listen to this. If you look around Africans, there's billions of Africans now, uh, billionaires in Africa, right? And we still got a long way to go. And they're going to be more and more coming, becoming billionaires. If you look at the guys that are making cars in Ghana, um, um, uh, uh, Kantanka if you look at Emerson all these guys are future billionaires 
you know, Emerson, they are selling more cars in, in, in Nigeria now. Uh, innocent, innocent. They are selling more cars in Nigeria as people become aware that we need to buy Nigerian produce. They become proud of their own country. They start to thrive in their own culture. Same thing in Ghana, Kantanka. All those guys are future billionaires. You know, Dangote, once the refinery is, uh, starts, is operational, you're going to see his money fly up. You know, the people that are doing now in bauxite, in all these, you have to realize Africa has almost every mineral that you can think of. You know, but you guys are not there. The Chinese are there making money, real money, billions of dollars. But you guys are not there and you keep fighting. Stop this idea of oh, we're going to go to Africa and they're going to have to welcome us with some red carpet. Forget about that. Go to Africa with a mission. Because believe me, the same thing that has been happening to you mentally, it's the same thing that has been happening to Africans. It's even worse in Africa. You know, you know the narrative, because you guys don't control the narrative. Most people in Africa think America is the place. This is where you got to go and make it. You know, we don't even, you know, people would rather leave. Instead of even just uh, create, getting like a metal detector on their yard to detect if there's any minerals. You know, if you've, if you've ever heard of the, the acres of diamond story, it's similar to what Africans do. Like we leave, I'm a victim of that too, where we leave acres of diamonds to go and look for diamonds elsewhere. And then the Chinese, the Europeans go into Africa and dig up the diamonds and become, and become wealthy. Whereas we move to these countries and become whatever you can say, doctors, engineers, and most people just become like regular people do regular jobs but you've left an acre of diamonds in africa it's our mindset the mentality you know, but you guys know a lot more things than the africans do believe me you know it was africans the 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 the, the fight for independence only started when Africans started mingling with African Americans and Kwame Nkrumah. I even saw recently in a video of the first president of Zambia, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, with uh, Martin Luther King. You know, so these people started mingling and started sharing information. That's what led to the fight for independence in Africa. But then you guys stopped. And I'm pretty sure there was probably even things that were set up to, to bring about the, you know, to disconnect you guys from the continent. Because even um, uh, as a fella at Kuti, the Nigerian uh, uh, singer, is passed, he didn't become what he became until he met an, an African-American woman who taught him, you know, the guy was dressed in suits and all those things. He said, why are you dressed like that? You got your own culture. You know, that's how, that's how mentally we've been messed up in Africa, mate. But you guys know this. Now, going back to... To um, Marcus Gavi, he raised millions of dollars. This is over 100 years ago. This man was raising millions of dollars. Imagine how much you can raise when there's more of you now and more of you can afford a dollar. There's 40 something million Americans. At least you can afford a dollar. Most people in Africa can't even afford a dollar. They can, but they have free land. You know? So basically, what's going to happen is you guys can put your money together and you go to the Africans and say, you know what? I'm going to own. 60% of this, because I'm bringing in capital, I'm bringing in machinery, but this is your land, you know, so you're going to use that as capital and you're going to own 40%. You see, you, see, you, see how that, you see how that goes? You see how that goes? It's cooperation over competition, guys. If you guys can go there, get into farming. I saw a video recently of a black man who used to grow, who used to be a chicken farmer. He got ripped off by corporations. Because he was black. And this man is complaining now his business is, is done. And I'm saying, man. And I thought to myself, with the knowledge that you have about chicken farming, get that knowledge with the little money that you have. If there's any equipment left, pack it up. Ship it. Visit a few countries in Africa. Anywhere. Kenya. South Africa. Namibia, Botswana, Zambia, Ghana, you go there and start that chicken farm and you never ever have to fight some racist corporations. And believe me, you're going to be a millionaire. In a few years time, you will be a millionaire.
people are becoming millionaires in Africa from chicken farming. We love our chicken. I'm not even going to shy away from that. I like steak, like T-bone, but I like chicken. And from what I'm hearing, it's even healthier because it's white meat. You know, people are become, and then you can add all sorts of things. Once you have that money, you don't have to lose your American citizenship. Once you have that money, start investing. America is a machine that makes money. Start investing that money in Teslas, in, 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 uh, in all these companies, Microsoft, uh, Apple, uh, you know, all these companies, Hague Holdings, I can mention them. I, I have a very good portfolio. For 75% of my portfolio, I've invested in America. I might never step foot in America, but I'm making money, you know. And that's what you got to do. You build an American, you can put in a lot of money in there and then let that money grow. But at the same time, what you're doing is you have kids. You have, you're working with Africans there. You're changing uh, people in Africa by creating jobs. This is just this is an example of the chicken farmer. We can do the same thing with mining. And in America, there's education they can get in terms of mining, in terms of uh, 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 fixing. Because if, if, if you have even a certificate three, of mobile mechanics, you move to Africa, especially to like Congo, you move to Zambia, you move to uh, even Ghana, where there's a lot more mining going on. Man, you never go without work. You'll be making millions of dollars within a short period of time. You know, but imagine if we did it collectively, collectively, Americans come together, the same cry that Marcus Gavi said, we put that out. And we start donating a dollar each, like what the ADDI is doing. But the ADDI sounds more like there's an African diaspora. What we want is an African diaspora, including African Americans. If you can start putting a dollar, that's $40 million every month. When we have $300 million, we can create a company called Pan African Co. You know, we can go in the hood and start getting little kids. Eight, nine, ten years old. Start setting them up so that the moment they finish that, they can go and work uh, in Africa. So that the environment does not end up affecting them. I saw a video that made me quite sad of a young man who, because of his environment, he shot someone, some white kid that went to buy drugs in this neighborhood. And this is nothing racial. Killing someone doesn't matter. Who oh, is not a good thing. And obviously they arrested this kid. I think it's called The Pharmacy. Is it The Pharmacy? The Pharmacist? Or oh, it's on Netflix. This is true life. True story. They arrested this kid. Um, went to jail. And the only time he got out of his neighborhood was the time he went to jail. So he never even saw the, out, the, the, the America outside there. He never saw it. The only thing he knew was his neighborhood. You know. That's nature over nature. So his, 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 his own mindset was going to be about drugs, killing, and surviving. You know, If we can be getting these kids before, they, before their minds become like that and, and show them to be proud of themselves. I saw one of my, one of my fellow, uh, one of my favorite, uh, 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 my, my role, actually more like my role model, my mentor. He's got the Wall Street Trap. Are you checking my, I did an interview. And uh, the white guy, was interviewing him goes you know i actually believe the next uh elon musk will come from the ghetto but the thing is the kid in the ghetto doesn't have the confidence and this is not the wall street trapper saying this was a white guy that was interviewing him, and he was right we need to give these kids the confidence you know so when they come they get their education which they will And they can do fly in, fly out, even from Africa, where they can go there working the mines. Because I've seen this. I've seen people uh, in, on construction sites, you know, logging, like timber logging, uh, uh, um, salmon farming or fishing, um, uh, even just mining in Alaska and stuff like that. I hardly see black guys. Every time I see these shows, it's all white kids, you know, who are learning these trades. And um, the black kids, they are just caught up in... In that environment which is harmful to their well-being 
and we need to change that and we can change that if we go if we put cooperation over competition okay okay and what that happens there's so many things if you look at bauxite bauxite is is needed in like aluminium africa has about one third of the world bauxite reserves platinum is there you know instead of us looking at all uh, the, the the album went platinum or the song went platinum <laughs> let's go dig up some real platinum okay let's connect uh, a, a platinum for a song and how many shares they have in a platinum mining company in africa you know, once we bring all that together we can with 300 million dollars within like 18 months we can turn that into 1.8 billion dollars you know, because we're going to have everything in farming. We're going to have every, But this can only be achieved once we do it together. Together. Then watch what happens now when you start creating multi-billion dollar companies. Because you can move those companies and put them on, uh, on, uh, on Wall Street. Because believe me, Elon Musk today is worth 280 something billion dollars. Or 30 something billion dollars, depending on who you ask. That does not mean Elon Musk has that type of kind of money. In, the, in his pocket or in his account for him to get even a hundred million dollars he has to sell his shares so that means the capital that he has is in shares you know so you know there's a, there's a company called Jumia which managed to raise five billion dollars on its IPO and this was a, a, a business in Africa unfortunately it wasn't the African or African Americans behind it was white kids so even white kids have noticed that they could make money. And this is the, the, the reason why even uh, Jumia hasn't been so successful. Because it wasn't really black kids doing it. You know. But if you guys can create something like that. Wall Street is yours. Wall Street even started in the days of slavery. You know. But we are not out there putting comp our own companies. Like your own companies and making money. You're not doing it. So once we create wealthy. Then we can start controlling the Senate. Just like the Jews do it. Then you can get your reparations. Then you can get pretty much everything that you want. Because money gives you power. You know, you can own many televisions. Like revolt is good. But let's have more revolts. You know, once we have that. Then you can start controlling the narrative. And this is what I'm talking about. Create wealth. And the quickest way to create this wealth will be to connect with the diaspora, to connect to Africa, you know, farming, everything. Let's make sure that whatever is in the hood, every little shop that's in the hood, that's selling sheer butter, uh, 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 fake hair, and all that stuff, let's make sure it's 100% owned by black people. And the way you do that, let's create a franchise. And sheer butter is in Africa. It's all over Africa. You know, let's go get it. And put it in these shops and you own a franchise through the billions that we are going to create and we own every shop at every corner of our streets of your streets in America then we do the same thing in Africa the thing guys is this Africa is on the rise unfortunately Africa will always face problems if you you can even look at what's happening in Ethiopia the moment the country started developing they are now at war but we will continue begging because we don't even know where we are headed. Now there's all these rebels and whatever trying to fight uh, uh, the prime minister. That's actually done quite well in Ethiopia for the last five years. I think Ethiopia is growing at 10%. Now it's going to be confusion over there. However, aside from that, if you look at Ghana, you look at countries like Zambia, even look at South Africa, the ANC, they're losing power. You know why? Because they're not doing great. They're not running the economy uh, great. So there's... Uh, things are going to change for the better. In Zambia, they just had elections recently that um, uh, managed to take out a corrupt leader and they've put in a very good leader, an economist, a billionaire himself, uh, uh, who's made money without being in politics. So he knows what he's doing. And I bet you that country is headed in the right direction. You know, Rwanda is one of them. Even Uganda is not a bad place to invest. You know, Kenya, you know, not a bad place to invest. You know, Ivory Coast, Senegal, all these places, even if you're on these days, I'm hearing it's a very good place for investments. But we got to create some sort of uh, uh, coming together. In America, you come together. Someone needs to be preaching this message. 
because because marching and begging will always make you a minority minority just means unimportant you never hear the jews even the asians where minority term is being them it, 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 they can use it but at the end of the day if you got money you have become you've become important and the way they treat you is different and this is where African Americans should be headed. Don't believe in these wars of some people trying to create these so-called diaspora wars. It's that's just idiocy, and we should never ever follow that. You know, it's cooperation over competition, assets over liabilities. You know, if we quarrel, those are just liabilities. We both both sides lose. But if we create an asset cooperation we win and that's what we should be focusing on just remember the senate was controlled by jews how did they do that money if you want to do the same thing create wealth that's my message here guys thank you and thank you for watching please subscribe goodbye